I'm Dr. Caitlin Houghton. My uncle Pat got diagnosed with Barrett's esophagus and came to me for advice. Today, Uncle Pat is meeting with his gastroenterologist, Dr. Aponagari. We're gonna review his endoscopy findings and find out what his treatment options are. Hey Pat, how you doing? Doctor, nice to see you Good again. Good to see you, all right. So I wanted to bring you in to talk about your results from your endoscopy. So when we went down and took a look, you had a condition, it looks like called Barrett's esophagus. Is that good or bad? So Barrett's esophagus, what it is, it's from having long-term acid reflux, and it's when acid comes up and can change the lining of your esophagus. The reason why we worry about Barrett's esophagus is it can be a precursor to esophageal cancer. Is there something I should be watching or doing? What do I look for? So with Barrett's, right, there's different types of Barrett's esophagus. So what you have is what we call non-dysplastic Barrett's esophagus. That means that there are not further advanced changes that would make it high risk for cancer, okay? So your risk for cancer is still very, very low. It's less than 1% a year, okay, which is good. As Dr. Aponagari describes Uncle Pat's endoscopy findings, he mentions Barrett's esophagus and a risk of cancer, probably not what you would expect after getting a scope for acid reflux. Barrett's is a change in the cell type that lines the esophagus. It occurs due to gastric contents washing up into the esophagus and causing chronic injury. If these cells continue to get injured from the gastric contents, they can continue to change and become disorganized, or in medical terms, dysplastic. Once dysplasia occurs, now your risk of esophageal cancer goes even higher. So it's fortunate that at this point, Uncle Pat has non-dysplastic Barrett's. We actually have the ability to send your tissue off for something called tissue cipher. And that helps us risk stratify you even more, meaning it will break down the tissue and tell us if it's a low risk, an intermediate risk, or a high risk for progression to cancer. So we're able to do that on you, and it was low risk. Tissue Cipher is an additional test that can be sent on routine biopsies taken during endoscopy. The Tissue Cipher assay looks at protein biomarkers, nuclear morphology, and the tissue architecture to generate a score that can predict the progression of these cells to either high-grade dysplasia or esophageal cancer. This additional information gives providers a really good way of talking to patients about their individual risk of developing cancer in the future. So you have also something called a hiatal hernia. Also sounds scary, not scary, okay? I've had a couple of relatives have had that. Yes. My uncle had it operated on a long yes. time ago. So what a hiatal hernia is, is when the top of your stomach goes above the diaphragm or the breathing muscle and it causes an opening. So basically things are more open at that junction between the esophagus and stomach than they would be in someone without a hiatal hernia. So it just makes you more prone to the acid coming up causing tissue damage, causing those changes. How are your acid reflux symptoms? Are you taking any medication for it right now? In the past, if I had it, I would take a Tums or something similar to that. I guess it depended on what I ate or what I drank. And I haven't had an episode, you know, at, at nighttime when you're laying down and you it comes up and it's almost like you can't breathe. Yeah. I haven't had one of those since I've been on the meds. What about the issues with swallowing? Sometimes get food stuck in my throat. Typically, it's soft food. It, and not all the time. I can cough it up. You've heard Uncle Pat talk about food getting stuck in his throat or dysphagia a couple times in this series. That alone is a concerning symptom and needs to be discussed with a provider. So sometimes that can happen because one, you can have a frank narrowing called a stricture in your esophagus. Now you didn't have that, thankfully. Okay. So sometimes uncontrolled acid reflux can give that sensation of difficulty swallowing. So I wanna monitor how the swallowing does after we start you on the medication to see if that help opening up your esophagus and reducing the inflammation helps your swallowing. And besides medication, you know, we talk about diet with acid reflux, trying to limit trigger foods, limit acidic type of foods, right? So these are things like spicy foods, tomato sauces, chocolate, alcohol, caffeine. We want your symptoms to be controlled again, because this is one of those things by controlling your symptoms, it's gonna help prevent further changes from the acid reflux. It just means we need to keep an eye on things uh, and do the endoscopy, like I said, every so often for you, it's gonna be in three years and keep you on the medication for the acid reflux to control your symptoms. So those are the two main things. Other than that, I don't anticipate you getting esophageal cancer. I don't anticipate the shortening your life at all. We're gonna make sure of that. That's why 
we're doing all these things. In this consultation, we've heard Dr. Panagari describe that Uncle Pat has long segment non-dysplastic Barrett's. Barrett's is a precancerous lesion, which can be concerning. However, he's pretty reassured by the fact that it's non-dysplastic and that he has a low tissue cipher score. In addition, Uncle Pat has a small hiatal hernia, which can predispose him to having pretty bad acid reflux, but his symptoms are controlled on medications, which is also reassuring. Dr. Panagari recommends that Uncle Pat continue taking the antacid medication and comes back for a surveillance endoscopy at three years. Are there other options to, other than the meds, take care of this problem? Yeah. So aside from medications, typically what we do is surgery. Now, usually in our world, we will reserve surgery for those patients that fail medications. If we get to the point though, that you are failing multiple medications, meaning you're still feeling a lot of heartburn, acid coming up, chest pain, things like that, then that's when we talk about, hey, do we wanna go down the route of surgery instead of doing medications? Patients often come to me frustrated that they've been on escalating doses of medications for years and never knew that there was a surgical option for controlling their symptoms. They've never gotten to hear a surgeon's perspective. Well, stay tuned, because next week, we're taking Uncle Pat to see Dr. Kemp, a foregut surgeon who specializes in acid reflux, Barrett's esophagus, and hiatal hernia repairs. We'll see what she recommends for Uncle Pat.